Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at your service from the Black Holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Advertising. I'd like to describe briefly what is meant by the term rhombic antenna. You've probably heard this term and you probably have an idea that it has that the general configuration or design of the antenna has something to do with a rhombus which is a four-sided geometric figure where all four sides have equal length the angles don't all have to be the same but but opposite pairs of angles always have equal measure that is a rhombus and a rhombic antenna takes this shape. Each leg of the rhombic has length L. We might measure that length in feet or in meters or in wavelengths. I guess it's most convenient to use wavelengths. The rhombic antenna is a wire antenna and it's generally large in dimension requiring a lot of real estate and ham radio operators commonly use it as a directional antenna on the 80 meter, 75 meter, 60 meter, 30 meter, pardon me, 40 meter, and sometimes 30 meter bands. It can also work on higher bands all the way up to 30 megahertz and sometimes even 50 megahertz, but these are the most common bands used. Once in a while you will see 160 meters and sometimes that's high as six meters in frequency, in terms of frequency. But the general idea is that the length L of each leg should be at least one wavelength and preferably two wavelengths or so. Uh, and the dimensions or the angles of this rhombus, that is to say the measures of the angles at the corners like this in particular those are the angles they're the same uh, angle and the the measure depends upon how long this wire is if you make the long wire a certain length it'll have major lobes that come off of it at a specific angle this angle right here and this angle right here should be twice that specific angle so all four of the major lobes on the outsides of these wires here that is the this major lobe this major lobe this major lobe and this major lobe all conspire and reinforce each other to form a massive bi-directional pattern like this that goes the long way along the rhombus you'll get a, a pretty close to a true bi-directional pattern this way. Now notice that the far end of this rhombus, the end opposite the feed line, which should normally be an open wire or other balanced type of transmission line going to your antenna tuner, uh, which you will need for use with such a line. There's your balance line. 450 or 600 ohm ladder line works very well. This end right here is open. That is to say these two wires are not shorted out. So in effect you have two wires with length 2L each and there's an angle here so that they're kind of bent and the result is that you get if you make the angles and lengths just so you'll get this massive bi-directional pattern. Now if you add a non-inductive resistor right here of approximately 600 ohms and if it has sufficient power dissipation capability to uh, literally dissipate half of the power coming out of your radio. So if you run 600 watts output from your radio this should be a 300 watt resistor if you run 1500 watts with a brick on the key in your antenna tuner you're going to need at least 
a 750 watt non-inductive 600 ohm resistor right there and good luck finding one of those on the market you'll have to make it for yourself but when you do that and you'd say why would you want to do that you're going to lose half of your power in that resistor just heating it up well the reason for that is that it gets rid of the back side of this bi-directional lobe thereby creating a unidirectional lobe it doesn't add any gain it just gets rid of the back response so that you get a unidirectional antenna both in terms of transmitter output and receiver sensitivity signals coming in from the right or going out towards the left that is your maximum and if these lengths are hundreds of feet long of course you're going to need a lot of real estate and you're not going to be able to steer this thing very well but if you have a particular favored direction that you like to use and maybe if you have for example a sked with someone overseas and you want to maintain that sked with them on the 40 meter band and you don't have the wherewithal to construct a or deploy a three element rotatable Yagi on 40 meters or something like that you can build one of these antennas and you'll get several DBD of forward gain and you'll also get a lot of uh, diminished response from unwanted directions now of course I did not mention these other lobes from these wires uh, that uh, will contribute to side lobes and they're always going to have those with any kind of long wire antenna but that is the overall gist of the concept of the rhombic antenna and believe it or not people still use these things when I worked at the ARRL headquarters station W1 AW in Newington Connecticut in 1977 and 1978 they had one of these antennas as a backup and they could use it on any of these bands if one of the other main antennas happened to go out of commission for a while and it was aimed at San Francisco California which was optimized for the continental United States from Newington Connecticut so that was the story with that uh, maybe that rhombic is still there they had a lot of real estate on their headquarters land there and they just ran this thing right over the headquarters building and kept it in operating condition and uh, once in a while it saved the day Stan Jubilisco proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1 GV saying 73 for now which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long.